Rheumatic fever is an autoimmune condition that typically develops two to four weeks following a streptococcal throat infection. It affects primarily children between the ages of 5 and 15, but around 1 in 5 first-time attacks are in adults. The incidence is generally low in developed countries, but in some indigenous populations, such as those found in Australia and New Zealand, it is significantly higher. We already said that rheumatic fever is an autoimmune condition, which results from an individual that is genetically predisposed and an interaction with group A streptococci, which commonly comes from a throat infection. It is thought that the cross-reactive immune cells come from molecular mimicry between group A streptococcus antigens and molecules present in the individual's tissues. Streptococcus pyogenes is one of the most common agents involved, specifically epitopes from Streptococcus pyogenes' cell wall include the M protein, antigen presenting cells such as B lymphocytes will present the antigen to CD4 T helper cells, which then activate the B cells to become memory B cells and eventually plasma cells. These then produce antibodies against the M protein antigen. However, Due to molecular mimicry, meaning similar structures of the molecules, antibodies against these antigens also cross-react with molecules in the body. These include cardiac myosin, laminin, as well as molecules in neuronal, subcutaneous and dermal tissues. The targeting by the antibodies of these tissues generates a type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. As we mentioned, cases of rheumatic fever typically occur two to four weeks after a throat infection with streptococcal bacteria. The most common findings include a fever, and it is often a high-grade fever above 39 degrees Celsius. As well as this, joint pain is a very common complaint, and the most indicative type of joint pain is a migrating polyarthritis. This typically affects the large joints mostly asymmetrically in the lower limbs and then migrating upwards. In approximately 50% of cases, there is also cardiac involvement, which is mostly carditis. This includes pericarditis, myocarditis, or valvulitis. Collectively, these may present as chest pain, shortness of breath, or palpitations. Damage to the valves is not common in the first attack, and is more associated with repeat attacks. Insults to the valves can lead to dysfunction, most commonly mitral regurgitation. Overall, rheumatic fever patients have an increased risk of atrial fibrillation, heart failure, and infective endocarditis. Other potential findings include subcutaneous nodules, which are collections of collagen, found most commonly on the extensor surfaces on the hands, wrists, elbows, and knees. There may also be a non-itchy rash known as erythema marginatum. This appears with a red margin and a clear centre. Sydenham's chorea, meaning uncoordinated, involuntary, jerky muscle movements, are a possible finding. It is found mostly on the face, but can be seen in all four limbs. The presence of these findings make up part of the Jones criteria, which is involved in the diagnosis, and can be remembered with the mnemonic Jones Caffey Pal. The Jones portion of the mnemonic makes up the major criteria. J is for joint involvement. The O can be pictured as a heart to remember the cardiac manifestations. N is for the subcutaneous nodules. And the E is for erythema marginatum, while S is for Sydenham's chorea. The minor criteria are given by the Caffey Pal portion. C stands for an increased CRP above 3 mg per deciliter, A for arthralgia, which may seem strange as we already mentioned joint involvement. The reason is that migrating polyarthritis is considered a major criterion in all populations, while monoarthritis and polyarthralgia are only included as major criteria in high-risk populations. Otherwise, they are considered as minor criteria. A low-risk population is considered when there are two or fewer cases per 100,000 in school-aged children, 
or less than one in 1,000 in all ages combined. Anything above this is considered a moderate to high risk. F is for a fever, 38.5 being the cutoff for low risk populations, or 38 if they are high risk. E is for a raised erythrocyte sedimentation rate, which is 60 or more millimeters per hour in low risk populations, or 30 millimeters an hour in high risk populations. P is for a prolonged PR interval, and A is for an anamnesis, meaning a history suggestive of rheumatism. L is for leukocytosis, but bear in mind that leukocytosis is not used in the Jones criteria itself, but is used by the World Health Organization. Overall, evidence of group A strep infection with two major criteria or one major and two minor criteria are required. Note, however, that Korea does not need evidence of a prior group A strep infection and that if joint involvement meets the major criteria, arthralgia in the minor criteria cannot be counted. Just like if a patient has carditis as a major criteria, then a prolonged PR interval no longer counts as a minor one. We already mentioned the main lab values, and so other investigations include an ECG looking for blocks, first degree being the most common, but second degree and third or complete heart block can also occur. A chest x-ray may show a congestive picture or cardiomegaly, which may be suggestive of pericardial effusion. An echocardiogram would then be able to evaluate this effusion, as well as any valvular abnormalities. A throat culture is also sent, but this is often negative, showing the post-infectious nature of this condition. Therefore, anti-streptolysin O, where streptolysin O is a substance produced by group A streptococci, and anti-deoxyribonuclease B antibodies may then be looked for. In the acute setting, the overall aim of treatment is to provide symptomatic relief and to begin appropriate secondary prophylaxis, as most manifestations will resolve spontaneously. The main outlier is carditis. Generally, pain relief such as paracetamol is preferred to opioids. However, the joint pain in rheumatic fever is very sensitive to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Therefore, if there is a suspicion of rheumatic fever, then NSAIDs should be avoided as they may mask the migration of the pain, which would then be a major criteria. Antibiotics are recommended in confirmed cases of acute rheumatic fever, typically an injection of benzathine benzylpenicillin or oral erythromycin in patients who are allergic to penicillin. Patients with carditis who develop heart failure will require cardiac medication such as ACE inhibitors and potentially diuretics. In the patients with chorea, in nearly all instances, this will self-resolve within six months. But if the chorea puts the person at risk, then carbamazepine or valproic acid may be started. Secondary prophylaxis includes long-term antibiotic use, the first line being injections of benzathine benzyl penicillin every three to four weeks, or oral erythromycin if the patient is allergic.